gorgeous California coastline just west of us here at West High School in Torrance, home of a showdown of the top two teams in lacrosse in Southern California. Harvard West Lake versus St. Margaret's, the best from LA and Osei here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for these two teams. St. Margaret's 20 wins on the season. They play more games, though, than Harvard Westlake. The real key numbers, though, are the goals for and goals against almost identical, making for one heck of a season finale matchup. Well, hi there, everybody. Sam Farber and James Etheridge here with you on Time Warner Cable Sports, ready to bring one of the best games of the year in lacrosse. Two teams with very young, energetic coaching staffs, and the kids have bought in. Yeah, they have, and you know, these both these coaches are new to each team this year. The the kids have bought into their system, and they've made it to the to the best game of the year, and it's going to be a great one. Let's take a look at some of the star players first for St. Margaret's. Ryan Harnish, a guy who can really control things off the draw. Yeah, he is the faceoff specialist, and in this game, if you have possession, you're going to win the game. So look for him to, as a sophomore, to be really powerful at the faceoff. The star player for Harvard Westlake is Noah Poppin, and this kid can score. He can grip it and rip it. Yeah, Noah Poppin, this guy. I, you know, his coach says, hey, look out because this guy's going to wrinkle the net. Once you get possession, give it to him and let him finish. It should be very exciting. We are excited to bring it to you here on Time Warner Cable Sports. The best of LA versus the best of OC. It's the Southern California Championships, Harvard Westlake and St. Margaret's next here on Time Warner Cable Sports. A fitting look at El Prado Bridge here in Torrance because West High School in Torrance is kind of the bridge between LA and OC today. The top teams from each county meeting head to head in the U.S. Lacrosse Southern Section Boys Championship here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Sam Farber and James Etheridge here with you ready to bring it to you. Let's take a look at the starting lineup first for the St. Margaret's Tartans, Kings of OC. Uh, they've got some superstars on this team. We talked about Ryan Harnish before the mid who is committed to Denver already as a sophomore. Lots of star power on this team, and their senior scorer, Chase Williams, is definitely a player to watch, attacker heading to Haverford next year. Their head coach is Glenn Miles, brings a military approach to this team here. Uh, he is a Naval Academy veteran, and he has really instilled some military discipline to this Tartan team. Now for Harvard Westlake, the LA champs this season. We take a look at their starters, and there's a three-headed monster to watch out for in terms of scoring all juniors, Jack Temko, Noah Pompman, who we talked about a little bit earlier, and Clay Davis on defense. All three very athletic, and uh, they are game changers, according to their head coach. Also watch out for the Holt House kids, including Roman out there. He's got a brother, Matthew, on the, uh, sorry, I made that Luke on the squad as well. Luke is the elder of the two, and uh, keep an eye on them in this matchup. As for Harvard Westlake, their head coach, Alex Weber, at the helm, another young coach, and James, uh, these coaches new to it, but obviously quickly reaching the pinnacle of their sport. Yeah, Alex uh, was handed over the, the, the head coaching job in January when Jay Pfeiffer, a Syracuse All-American, uh, headed back to, to take up a, uh, a post degree. And then for St. Margaret's, this whole crew of incredible NCAA athletes, who, it, led by Glenn Miles, is taking over that team. And boy, the boys have bought in and, and, and it's magic. Lacrosse still a sport kind of in its infancy stage here in California compared to other uh, better standing sports, more traditional ones. But quickly, lacrosse has caught up to some of the others. And we're seeing some big name schools recruiting some of these athletes and uh, quite a few on the field here will continue their careers in lacrosse at the collegiate level. Yeah, well, you've seen just, it used to be a small club of schools that always did well in the NCAA Division I, but now you're seeing it reach out as far as Denver, and you're seeing some great uh, lacrosse on the West Coast. We're looking at a very happy bunch of Wolverines and Tartans as they get out there. Very different huddles, the, the Tartans. As we talked about that military discipline, they're all kind of crowded together, very quiet. See a lot more smiles on the Harvard-Westlake side of the field. Two different styles of play, but it should make for one great game. Yeah, lots of structure, lots of structure at St. Margaret's. Harvard Westlake breaking the huddle. They will be in black today. The Southern California Championships, U.S. Lacrosse getting the best of L.A. and the best of O.C. here together. St. Margaret's in white, Harvard Westlake in black. And the two teams uh, meeting on the W here at West High School in Torrance. Just a gorgeous day for this. Got a little breezy here as we've reached the afternoon hours. And you can start to see some of the jerseys rippling for some of these players and uh, our crowd mics uh, hearing the effect as well of the wind here in 
Torrance. Two teams meeting at center field. What are you looking for in terms of the matchup well, here today, James, as, well, right, as the key to victory? This field is full of great athletes. That There's no doubt to that. But what's what's really going to count in a game like this with two great teams is possession. And it starts right with the faceoff. And you got two guys, Ryan Harnish, who we've already talked about, uh, who's going to be going against Philip Thompson, who is another great face-off, get-off type guy. These guys are going to battle it out at midfield, and they're going to do their best to get their team the ball. And it'll be interesting to see at halftime to see uh, how those stats uh, line up and see if they don't correlate strongly to the score. Everyone says defense wins championships, but you can't win without scoring, and you can't score without the ball. So that center play is really going to be key here today. We are ready to go. Harvard-Westlake in black. Out there on the field against the team in white from Orange County, St. Margaret's. Both these teams have been very successful, obviously, to this point. 20 wins on the year for the Tartans and 15 for Harvard Westlake, but their goals for and goals against are almost identical. 13 goals per game for St. Margaret's and 12 for Harvard Westlake. And here we go. The first faceoff is dug out and won by the Tartans of St. Margaret's. We'll start moving it up right to left across your screen here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Shanks on the left side trying to drive in and a little bit of contact. Ball comes loose and is recovered by Alex Waller. Waller cutting across the field. He'll get rid of it, sends it back to, I believe that's Josh Davis cutting in. Davis cutting along the near side, throws behind the net to Williams. Williams, one of the top goal scorers on this team. He'll reverse his course. On the far side of the net, trying to dip under. Has the ball swatted away. Great defensive strike there by Clay Davis. Ball is loose near the crease. And who's going to come up with it? It's the Tartans. Here's a little dump off pass. Ball got loose again and a lot of contact. And finally, Tartans pick it up with Davis. Back behind the net. It's Williams. Williams quarterback in this play. Fires to the far side and hitting is Josh Davis. The quarterback for the football team for St. Margaret's connects for the first goal of the game. Yeah, beautiful shot. Good look from the X position. Saw him cutting down. You know, I'm impressed for St. Margaret's. When they first brought the ball down, you know, they went right to the goal. And that's that's what uh, Jack, uh, Glenn Miles said he was going to do. They're just going to take a lot of shots today. And amazing accuracy. Not a lot of room left there by the Harvard-Westlake netminder. But that ball put in by Josh Davis. And yeah, good patience and good discipline uh, is already being displayed by St. Margaret's. So one nothing to score here uh, Here the we first. go. Here's the battle to face off. Two for St. Margaret's. Ryan Harnish winning again. And St. Margaret's, again, can set up offensively. Harvard Wesley, we just said it a minute ago, hard to score without the ball, and they haven't had it yet. Hasn't made it to their end of the field yet. Nick Shanks, just a freshman on this side. Throws behind the net to Waller. Waller trying to dig inside, Boom. reverses course, throws over the top shoulder, and it's blocked away. Nice save by the keeper. That was a good save. That was a good high percentage shot. Good Long play. pass, inaccurate. And this is a loose ball. It'll be picked up by St. Margaret's. The defensive player, Fernando Delgado, a sophomore, able to track it down. And back comes St. Margaret. So Harvard Westlake, first chance to possess the ball, and right away a turnover. Yeah, these clears and rides are going to be instrumental as well. If they can, if they can get the ball from one end to the other, that's uh, that's large. Davis just scored previously. Trips on his pivot, gets back up, maintains control. Nick Shanks now with it, the freshman. Throws far side for Harnish. Sam Harnish with it, back behind the net, and they'll work it around to Chase Williams again. Williams, the senior leader of this squad, and certainly a player to watch. Up top again, this is Davis. Davis throws behind the net to Williams. Back outside, Eddington. Eddington cuts in. Nice dipsy do move, and the ball is swatted away inside the crease. Looked like Clay Davis got the squat outside as that ball was just hovering near the goal line. Yeah, now that, as a shot, if, had that gone out of bounds, it would have been whoever was closest to the end line. But since he swatted it, it goes back to St. Margaret's. But another great shot and a great save. High percentage shot and a beautiful save by that goalie. He is tough up top. Ben Klein in the net, the junior for Harvard Westlake. Alex Waller behind the net, passes it off to Williams. Williams lost possession, got it right back. Comes around the far side of the net, throws it out up top. This is Davis. Davis to the near side for Eddington. Eddington trying to find room to shoot. He'll fire, and this one is saved nicely inside his pocket by Ben Klein. Yeah, Ben Klein was actually a second string goalie, but stepped up this year as first string. 
St. Margaret's turnover on the near side. Let's take a look at this save again from Klein, able to catch it. A, a nice rip, but but really stick side, stick high, a, an easy save, but uh, but still he had to make it and he did it. And he's got three saves at least already in the game, so he's showing his uh, his skill today. Harvard Westlake, a rare chance to possess the ball, and they'll look to Jack Temko to bring it up. So far, so good for the Tartans. They lead it one nothing. St. Margaret's and Harvard Westlake. Here's a push along the sideline, and ball is going to be turned over there. Good aggressive play by the Tartan defense to shove Jack Temko out of bounds, something that you don't see very much in the women's game, but in boys lacrosse, it is a part of the sport. Sure it is. Yeah, contact, and that explains the equipment. But if you can look a guy in the eyes, then, then you can be physical with him. Of course, you can't cross-check using the actual stick, but uh, but using your body is, is last line of defense, but very effective when you've got an end line to work with. So one nothing St. Margaret's, and again, they have First. possession. Had it almost the entirety of this first quarter. You're driving on the far side is Josh Davis. Back up top now for Gomez. Oscar Gomez holding on. Near side, Davis. Goal scorer, quarterback for the football team. He does it all. He'll throw it down low. A wide open look and a bounce shot in for Hunter Eddington. The junior notches another for St. Margaret's. It's 2-0 Tartans. It almost looks like a man-up situation. Their defense is playing so tight in that hole, they're, they're, they're giving too many opportunities to St. Margaret's. And that bounce shot is deadly. Trying to stick his foot out there for the kick save was Ben Klein. It just didn't have a chance. No, and you can see how open these guys are. That's that's really, uh, that, that should be. These guys should spread out and be a little more aggressive on, on team defense. St. Margaret's team chock full of players who are going on to the next level. Schools like Cal, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Denver, Grand Canyon University. A lot of athletic and next level talent in white today. Oh. Ball loose and taken over by Ryan Harnish, the faceoff man. Sophomore lost control, a tip pass, and here comes Harvard Westlake. First real possession on the offensive end. Roman Holdhouse with it. Yeah, that's their first eight face off, and that was just from hard work. They just they just weren't going to say no. Have a little bit of a line change going on on the far side as Harvard Westlake gets in some offensive ammo. Temko with it right now, one of the stars. Passes over to Eli Kaplan. Kaplan back up top to Temko. Around the 35 yard line here at West High School in Torrance. 2 0 to score St. Margaret's, but Harvard Westlake finally a look on the offensive end. Noah Pumpin. Pass up top for Kaplan, around to Temko. Temko, the drive, Temko, still handling it. Fires from distance and it skips away. It'll go over the far sideline and it's gonna stay with Harvard Wesley. Let's take a look at the shot. You can see him getting his body into that shot, whipping it low, but well wide of the net. He's gotta keep that on the cage. You can see their wide offensive set. You can see how, how wide out they are give themselves some space, try to create some opportunities, feel out this defense and see what they can find, see if they can find a hole. A lot of, a lot of kids having trouble with the field today. Hudgens loses it behind the net, taken away by the Tartans defender, John Connolly, the sophomore. Got glowing reviews from his coaching staff and makes the nice defensive play. And here's the transition, St. Margaret's shifting into the offensive end with Josh Davis, quarterbacking the play. He drives in and we've got a whistle. And it's an illegal substitution called against St. Margaret. The illegal substitution, St. Margaret's possession, Harvard Wesley. Yeah, the turf. I've seen. Uh, I've seen. You know, for just a few minutes into the game, I've seen quite a few kids slipping on this. So it might be. Uh, it might be an issue with the. Uh, with the turf. We'll it, see how that plays out. It's a turf field. They've got the little black uh, rubberish yeah. pellets out there, and. And if they're not used to it, I mean, uh, you know, that's too bad for, uh, for Harvard Westlake to lose their their possession on that gorgeous field and uh, thanks to all the folks here at West High School in Torrance for being so accommodating to us and our Time Warner Cable sports crew Sam Farber and James Etheridge here with you watching the LAOC showdown the Southern Section Championship in boys lacrosse it's 2-0 Tartans of St. Margaret's here in the first quarter about midway through it. Harvard Westlake setting up some sort of offense here looks like they're clearing out create some space for that left side. Behind the net, Hudgens. Far side for Drooks. Up top now, all the way to Temko. Temko took the earlier shot. Spin move, Temko near the net, fires high Beautiful. and he scores. Beautiful shot there by Jack Temko. Great and he had all the moves there. Yeah, great unassisted goal. They, they cleared it out for him and he, uh, he knows what to do. Give him the ball and, and he'll make it happen. 
just look from the spin move transitioning into the charge towards the net. It takes about three steps and he is in shooting range. And just a subtle look, uh, his helmet dropped and I think that, that led the goalie to believe that he was gonna shoot low and he just stuffed it high, great play. So Harvard Westlake is on the board, it's two to one. With a little under six minutes left in the quarter, another faceoff won by Ryan Harnish. And right away, St. Margaret's into the attack zone. Nick Shanks, the freshman. Long Far stick. side, a long shot taken and missed by McGowan, or blocked, I should say. And that was with a long, that's a long stick midi, so he's got he's got a the longer stick there, and you can get a lot of power on those. But again, right in the stick of the goalie. Here's a pass underneath and a little kick save made by the netminder Ben Klein, as that one was not completely handled by St. Margaret's. For those unfamiliar to lacrosse, it's pretty easy to tell who the defensive-minded and offensive-minded players are. Defensive-minded players have the long sticks, offensive-minded are the shorter sticks, which make it for better accuracy when they're shooting. Right, and the rules dictate that only four long sticks can be on the field for each team. So you're gonna see three down at the defensive side of the field, and then during a defensive play, you'll have a midi with a, with a long stick, which, uh, and you'll see that out there, uh, number 23, I believe, for St. Margaret's. Near side, Temko with it, the goal scorer for Harvard Westlake, and he's pretty much done it on his own, and he's kind of going Kobe Bryant on us here, clearing out the rest of his offensive players as he starts to make his charge toward the net and turned around by Winston Robinson, a senior for St. Margaret's. Inaccurate pass, and it's going to go loose over the sideline, over to St. Margaret's. Yeah, that's unlucky, but that's good. You know, when they clear out like that, and as he drives, he's going to draw the, 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 the slide of the defense, and when they get that, they are uh, they have the opportunity there to feed another guy like they just tried and it unfortunately it was a mispass. Well, we're seeing two very different styles of offense here Harvard Westlake trying to do it on their own and it's cost a lot of turnovers five so far for the Wolverines. St. Margaret's a much better teamwork much better passing so far. You see it here as they bring it up the near side of the field McGowan with the long stick. There's your long stick Mitty once again. Makes the pass off this is Eddington. Eddington inside the crease it goes to Sam Harnish. Harnish loses it, and the ball gets launched upfield. Harvard Westlake trying to track it down, and this is going to go over the end line. It'll stay with Harvard. Nope, check that. It'll go over to St. Margaret's, as that one was so that, launched from the far side. Right, of the field. that was a pass. So, so once that goes out of bounds, it goes to the opposing team. Two to one, our score. Under four minutes left here in the first quarter. Looks like Harvard Westlake defense has settled down. It looks like they're they're covering the crease well and uh, let's see if they can keep it up here. Here comes the Denver commit, McGowan. Into the center of the field for Eddington. Far side, nice spin move by Sam Harnish. Behind the net, it goes to Williams, and Williams will set up shop. Eddington. Up top, this is Davis, the quarterback, the goal scorer already for St. Margaret's, a two to one lead. Davis just dancing with the ball right now. Sends it back to a upward attacker. This is Gomez. Gomez fires behind the net. Harnish outside. It goes to Eddington. Eddington up top. Davis. Davis charging. Is swayed by the defender. Makes a nice pass down low. Shot skips through the crease and off to the far side where it'll be picked up by Chase Williams. Williams to Davis. Davis shoots high and it's offline. It'll go out of play staying with St. Margaret's. Yeah, another just some great offense here. You can see how well they move the ball. Um, you know, but again, 2-1. You can see they, they had, St. Margaret's has had possession, but the scoreboard really isn't dictating how long they've held onto that ball. Alex Waller, nice spin move, but he can't find a lane to shoot. Gives to Williams. Williams back out for Eddington. Eddington up top. This is Davis. Davis shoots from distance and a save made. That one another pretty easy one up around stick yep. level. Yeah, that, he, he's going to save those all day. He's got skills. He is, he is not going to let you have any free goals. Joey Lieberman trying to go coast to coast, and he has it. Taken away, strip made by Brandon Sushan, the Grand Canyon University commit. He goes into the attacking end, and he'll pass it down to the yeah, lower the, third. That's a trail one. check. Once you pass a guy, you, you got to remember he's still there. And uh, a lot of these, a lot of players just forget that there's a guy behind you who wants that ball as bad as you do. St. Margaret's up a goal, two to one. Just trying to set up their offense right now. They have been much better in team offense than Harvard Westlake to this point. Great defense there by Noah Poppin in the face of the defender. Flag comes out, and we'll have a holding call. Yeah, that was a hold, uh, you know, just real high up around the neck, too. I thought it might even be some sort of personal foul, but uh, 
We'll take a you second take a, look at it, Yeah, too. you can take a look at this. You can see it's uh, a dangerous area to play defense on, but uh, got away with just a hole. He is on the spin. And the... Uh, yeah, we, we kind of missed it there, but it's uh, but but once again, good call by the by the ref trying to keep this game safe. So we've got a man up opportunity here for St. Margaret's. Once again, working as a unit to try to find that free man. Patrick Fallon on the far side with it, gives it off to Eddington. Eddington near side, Davis. Davis to Eddington. Eddington shoots and another save made. <coughs> Pretty hard shot there on Klein, but uh, the Harvard yeah. Westlake netminder, he's the difference between this first quarter getting out of hand and. Uh, Harvard Westlake still staying in the game. Absolutely, they're making him look good with those uh, with those those high those high shots right to a stick. Looks like another flag down. Could be a, a slash. Yeah, I think it's coming on St. Margaret's. I think a slash from behind. Meanwhile, Hudgens charges towards the net. Pass comes out. This is Holdhouse. Roman Holdhouse holding here on the near side. Free Pass. opportunity for them. They'll get the ball back and they'll be up a man after this uh, after this play. And the whistle won't be blown until the ball's dropped. Shot taken, taken and the block save made. Take a look at the uh, penalty coming up the near side, and it was for a slash. Here you see it. Again, it's not a bad check. It's a wrap check, and it's used a lot in lacrosse. The problem is that he hit his hip, and he didn't hit the stick. you got to hit the stick on one of those. Still the save made by Austin Birch, the netminder. Another fairly easy save, but a nice rip, but just right at the stick. Ben Klein, once again, he, uh, he he's just been a great fill-in for... Uh, for this team. He, he stepped up this year, and, and the coach couldn't say enough great things about his ability to, to tend that goal. So Harvard Westlake here nearing the final minute of the first quarter. Have a chance to tie it up with the advantage. And they're going to be man up pretty much for the rest of the quarter, and you're going to see him take the time and try to find an opportunity. St. Margaret's is going to try to work as a unit, five guys trying to cover six. Quick uh, shot taken there, and ill-advised from Roman Holdhouse. Didn't have a very good angle. I would agree with that. Taken away easily by St. Margaret's. He must have seen something that we didn't, but uh, but now they should they with the man up they should have everybody covered, including the goalie here. Anthony Uloa brings it up field. Check that. That's Brandon Sushan. Sorry, bringing it up field. Now Flint with. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say with the penalty situation, you might have an opportunity here if there's possession at the end of the quarter. Uh, Pat yeah, we'll Fallon see how this goes. It may not go to a faceoff, so we'll see what they do here if they if they challenge the goal. Final seconds ticking away. See if we get a last shot here from St. Margaret's. I don't think we will. The quarter comes to a close. St. Margaret's with a two to one lead. Goals from Hunter Eddington and the high school quarterback Josh Davis. Harvard Westlake staying in it too. Noah Popman hasn't been seen from yet, but Jack Tempko's got a goal. Harvard Westlake down a goal, two to one our score in the Southern Section Championship here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Getting a look at Old Torrance here as we watch a new game at West High School. St. Margaret's from OC and Harvard Westlake from LA, the Southern Section Championship here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Two to one our score, it is in favor of the Team in white, St. Margaret's. Class of OC in 2013. And in black, Harvard Westlake. Kind of going with the lone offensive soldier out there. Look with Jack Temko doing it all, an unassisted goal. Uh, but overall, the team play of St. Margaret's has been the stronger of the two sides. Sam Farber, James Etheridge with, with you as we see a quick shot. And this one goes off the side of the netting, close to the goal. I think Alex Waller thought he had it but it did deflect off the exterior of the goal and it stays two to one. Yeah, that was Scott McGowan again. That's his second shot. I mean, he's a he's a threat on offense, even with that long stick. Another nice shot and a great save. And we're gonna have a penalty on the play as well. Flag comes out. Ben Klein, is he is playing with some serious confidence today. He is. He's got seven saves and it looks like We've got a Flag penalty, and there's two more flags. A second flag on the play. Official right in our faces, we see the play. Well, a great save made, and the flag came out after the fact. And perhaps an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the coach for Harvard-Westlake as well. 
we were, we were staring right at the, the referee as he made the call. He was right in front of the scorer's table. And there is the head coach for Harvard Westlake, Alex Waller. Or sorry, make, make that Alex Weber. We'll see as the official comes to the table. On sports, like Full time, full time. For black That's green, unreleasable. Conduct, technical, thirty. So we're gonna have a minute thirty. It sounds like of uh, penalty time here. Unreleasable as well. So if a goal is scored, the penalty goes on. So, Harvard Westlake. You know, sometimes you see it in hockey a lot. Team kills a power play and it swings momentum to the your side, but I don't think Harvard Westlake really wanted to try that against a surgical striking St. Margaret's no, team. No, it, you want every guy out one there against this. Team. Harvard Westlake. First, a one minute personal for an illegal body check on number 38, Clay Davis. So we'll see if St. Margaret's, the Tartans, can cash it in up two to one. Patrick Fallon near side, pass for Sam Harnish back around the exterior. It'll go to Josh Davis, who already has a goal today. Davis pass off for Eddington. Eddington down low. They try and do a, a dunk shot for Sam Harnish. Good looking and play. He had it deflected. Again, I think that was Klein doing his job. Harvard Westlake's going to get possession back. Let's see it again. Alley oop pass looking for Harnish, and he just couldn't quite get his stick on it. So now Harvard Westlake down a man in this situation. He's going to try and kill some time and send the ball upfield, and right away taken back Sam Harnish to steal. Yeah, it's tough enough to clear a ball with uh, even, but down a man is tough, and you can see that. Uh, Edington nearly lost its shot, and it's saved again here by Harvard Westlake. Their keeper is on fire. I agree with that. You know he's got to be feeling it. He is. Uh, he's looking forward to shots. He knows he's going to save them. Now in transition, Harvard Westlake brings it up. This we'll try to kill Hudgens. them. They should work hard to kill this penalty, which they still have another minute on. And the pass and deflected. Hudgens able. Luckily to get it back. <laughs> Passes it off. Jack Tempko, the goal scorer. Back to Hudgens. He'll fire and score. Just a heads up play. Just a give and go, just like in basketball. Passed it off and made his way to the goal. Defense didn't pick him up and uh, got a great pass, great assist, and just stuffed it. Down a man, doesn't matter. Hudgens buries it. And he's asking the crowd, do you like it now? Tied it to. Another one of these juniors who's just flying under the radar, but just can be uh, just a threat at any time. And, and he just showed, man man down, and they, they get that goal. So it's tied at two. A little over 10 minutes left here in the first half. Harvard Westlake in black has even things up with the toast of the town in Orange County, St. Margaret's. Here we have the faceoff again. And and that face-off circle, St. Margaret's just really glowed about their center circle town in Ryan Harnish, but they're a win for Harvard Westlake. Roman Holdhouse will bring it up. Holdhouse on the far side, number 22, one of two Holdhouses on this team. Philip Thompson with the uh, face-off win. Now Brooks Hudgens, the goal scorer, juggling the ball, and he can't quite find the handle. Ball is going to be lost over the end line, but it was last touched by St. Margaret's and kind of intentionally throwing it over the line, so it stays yeah, with Harvard Westlake. That was strange. Both players had trouble pulling that in. It's a hot potato out there. Two all the score. Harvard Westlake on a bit of a run now. They've scored the last two goals. Yeah, with the man down, they've got the momentum, which is which is impressive. Now, now we're all even. Let's see what they can do. I guess if you're if you're really playing one on one lacrosse and you're not doing as much team offense as St. Margaret's has, it doesn't matter if you're the man down. Temko with a drive, a shot, and it's wide. It'll stay here with Harvard Westlake. Nice, nice rip, little sidearm, missed just a little bit left. Jack Temko, the, the coaching staff for Harvard Westlake said this is a guy that. So far, college coaches have missed on. They're really hoping he gets some scholarship offers this offseason. Yeah, he was. What what he can offer to a college program was was unlimited, according to his coach. Little little bit on the smaller side in terms of just watching him compared to everyone else on the field, but we see the athleticism. You sure do, and and still just a junior. But uh, you know, size is 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 less important in lacrosse than maybe other sports. Some of you know the Twarton Award winner this year, I think, is probably not going to be six feet. 
Roman Holdhouse far side has it stripped away and a takeaway here by St. Margaret's Brandon Sushan, the senior defender. He'll carry it upfield. Brandon was the goalie last year and uh, they needed a long stick and so he stepped up and, uh, and now he's just become the leader of this tough defense. Game tied to two. Behind the net, this is Waller. Going to Cal Poly slow next year. And he'll just continue to handle it, throws it behind the net to Chase Williams. Williams charging towards the crease, drop pass. Might have just left it unintentionally, but Waller there to pick it up. Might have given him too much credit. Yeah, people are having trouble holding on to that ball today. Waller handling his stick one-handed. A little bit of contact there behind the net. Good pick, legal. Thrown out to Harnish. Sam Harnish rips it, and this one blocked in front, scooped up by St. Margaret's. Surprising he didn't shoot when he scooped up that ball right on the crease. Nobody in front of him. Nick shows shakes. to take it out, shows good patience. The freshman able to get to it. So it stays with St. Margaret's. Tied at two, seven and a half minutes left here in the first half. Harnish up top. They'll work it around the far side now to Hunter Edington, who's got a goal. Drive by the junior, turns course, reverse sides, Davis. Davis shoots low and another save. Klein. I think we know who the star of the game is. So far he is uh, he's the MVP for, for Harvard. Really both teams, I mean the, the teamwork from St. Margaret's has been great. They've gotten a lot of good shooting angles and every time he has a chance, Klein turns him away. Yeah, that's gonna be key. We'll see how this game turns out, but uh, so far, he has really been the backbone of their defense. Timeout taken here. Let's take another look at some of the stick work in net by Ben Klein, the junior goaltender. React early, steps to the ball, just, just unlucky that it got away from him, but, uh, but just a great save. What makes up a, a good net minder in lacrosse compared well, to the other net related sport that you hear about a lot. Well, you know, you got this ball coming at you close to 100 miles an hour. So you gotta, you gotta be, first of all, have that genetic ability to not flinch. Then you gotta be a great athlete. Let's take a look at how these two teams got here. Starting off with St. Margaret's, the Kings of Orange County had to upset last year's champion, Corona Del Mar, to get here. But really, this team appears to be more dominant than their three seed would indicate. Yeah, you, you know, they outscored their opponents just in the playoffs, 65 to 20, even with a running clock against Foothill, which is unbelievable. Foothill's a great, uh, a great program. So uh, they they swept through their playoff berth. Harvard Westlake, on the other hand, winning the LA section, and they too had to upset the top dogs, but they had a lot closer games on their hands all throughout the tournament. Yes, they did. They they, uh, they committed themselves after a loss in the league championship to do their very best and to play to their potential during these playoffs. And they did just that with an overtime win uh, by Roman Holdhouse uh, to get past Westlake and then uh, a two-goal win over Palos Verde. So here they are. It's been a low-scoring affair so far, but a lot of excitement for the fans in attendance here at West High School in Torrance. Glad you could be with us as well here on Time Warner Cable Sports, watching the lacrosse championships here for Southern California, LA versus OC. And uh, tell me, James, how far has lacrosse come last few years here in Southern California? Well, I'll tell you what, I coached it in 1996 through 98 down in San Diego, and we used to have to order everything from the East Coast. Now we have multiple stores in the Northern San Diego area that sell lacrosse equipment. We've seen teams go from one programs from one team to five to six. We've seen it become a CIF sport in, in high school, and we'd love to see it become, uh, you know, to have to, to have this game pushed on to a state championship. Harvard Westlake and St. Margaret's tied at two. Here we see Jack Temko attempting a drive, pass inside. Nice look to Noah Pompin, but he did not have room, or at least didn't feel he had room to fire off a shot. The popularity also is, you know, it's competing against baseball, and, and that still has its following. But in the spring, you know, kids who play lacrosse, they just love it. And parents love to watch it. There's a goal. Cephas, right a nice the shot. Lines. And the goalkeeper dismayed Austin Birch as he could not quite find that one in air. Justin Cephas instead finds the back of the net. 
Harvard Westlake has the lead for the first time. Quick shot, you can see he hit it well behind his head, brought it down and through, nice over the top goal. They're always gonna be on cage and uh, just unlucky for the goalie. Just snuck right under his stick and right between his legs. You know, you talk about this ball getting winged around there. I mean, just incredible velocity and the netminders in there, tough as nails. They're not wearing pads on their legs. No, they're not and it's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's always been that way and it probably always will be. They've got a chest protector on and a throat guard, but beyond that, yeah, everything, you can see their arms and legs are unprotected and, you know, you sacrifice that. You put them out in front and, uh, you know, you get the welts, but, uh, but you save the goal. Well, hopefully it's not something where it takes a serious incident to get a, a change in equipment because, I mean, you think back to, you know, baseball and, and its infancy and football and the lack of padding sure. worn by some of these guys. Well, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's been like that for, for, for years and years. You can see the girls' game, they're, they're well suited. I mean, they've got pads, everything's covered. But uh, but yeah, I played goalie in high school, and, and it's really, it's not a, a big an issue as you think. Uh, as a as a goalie, you, you tend to use your stick more than your body, but uh, and it doesn't hurt as bad as you think. It, it's gone in a few days. A few days? Well, the, the welt. A little ice, and they're gone. Goaltender in Good lacrosse, that's as tough as you get. Now we're gonna have a foul called here and it's on St. Margaret's. Looks like they called a push. Looked like good individual defense there. Opportunity once again for Harvard Westlake. It's definitely a contact sport, and, you know, in high school, I mean, obviously at the college level, you gotta specify what sports you wanna play. It's very rare to see a two sport athlete at that high a level. But in high school, kids play a lot of sports. So they if do. you're a spring athlete, or you want to be a spring athlete and say you're a football player, you want that aggressiveness, you can get out there in lacrosse and see it as we see it right there. You, do, you do have that opportunity. Oh, there's a beautiful Long shot. shot and a goal in from Jack Tempko, his second of the day. And this run is 4-0 in favor of Harvard Westlake. They've got a two goal lead. Yeah, we got to get, the, you can see the defense right now. Their body language down there is not, uh, they, yeah, there's a timeout being called here. They got to pull these guys together. And they are, uh, they just don't believe it right now. So somebody's got to wake them up and get them fired up because th th these are two great teams. The and I don't know that the defense believes that right now for St. Margaret's. The bench just exploding as that timeout was called. Alex Weber, the, the new head coach of Harvard Westlake. He was jumping about the highest of any of his players. And you, we were talking before the game. I mean, this is a very young coaching staff. You thought that Weber I, was a player. Yes, I was going over to interview him, and I thought he was one of the players. He is, uh, once again, handed this program in January. Wasn't, you know, they had a NCAA All-American ready to coach this team in Jay Pfeiffer, and uh, Pfeiffer had some opportunities that, that led to Alex's opportunity to lead this team, and uh, I think it's working out great. It's kind of a Cinderella story. They weren't expecting to be here. They had lost their league championship. If I can quote the coach, he said they got thumped. And look at him in the playoffs, they, they battled back, and beat the team that was here last year uh, representing LA and uh, and and now look at them they're leading 4-2 in this this omniportant game. Philip Thompson of Harvard Westlake heading towards the center circle of St. Margaret's takes a little extra time getting out of the huddle. Tartan started this game off very strong controlling the faceoffs, controlling possession, but they haven't necessarily uh, been able to to maintain that momentum here in the second quarter. Fans, we invite you to enjoy better, enhance your internet, HDTV, and home phone experience with Time Warner Cable. One bundle, one bill, and one happy you here with Time Warner Cable. Yeah, the face-offs have been pretty even. I, I, I'm pretty impressed. Both of these guys are battling it out. Both of them are very skilled, but it's really, no one's dominated. That one dug out by That's be a push. St. Margaret's in a clear cross-check in the back. So it'll be Tartan Ball off the restart. St. Margaret's down four to two, but they've seen four straight goals scored here by Harvard Westlake. So maybe a bit shell shocked. They'll look for the quick comeback. Waller on the far side throws behind net to Williams. Lots of opportunities that St. Margaret's isn't taking advantage of. I see open guys here and there, but they're they're patient and they're gonna figure it out and they've got uh, plenty of lacrosse left. Waller, far side, over to Eddington. Eddington passes back for Davis. Davis, Eddington on the near side, 
Shimmy Shake fires and misses wide. This one will stay with St. Margaret's as Chase Williams closest to the end line. Yeah, goal here I think would, uh, would certainly lift their spirits. Here's a distant shot from Eddington the over helmet. the top. Yeah, it looked like it bounced off a player. Again, backed up by St. Margaret's. Three and a half minutes to play here in the second quarter. Four to two, Harvard Westlake leading. Tartans trying to get another tally on the board. Haven't had one yet here in the second quarter. Chase Williams, wraparound, fires, and it's saved again by Klein. A Klein. brick wall there. Yes, yeah, just perfect position against that pipe. It He's creates ready. no opportunity for the attackman. Shoulder shrug move by Waller to try and get loose. He fires, and another save made by Klein. Really impressive, just aggressive. He went after that shot. He didn't wait for it, he went for it. Harvard Westlake coming up the far side as we check out the save made by Ben Klein on this wraparound attempt. You can see him up against the pipe, tight. Nothing nothing that the, uh, the attackman can do. And he is getting all kinds of high fives and fist bumps as he makes his way back to his huddle. He is very excited. Yeah, that next save was beautiful as well. I mean, that guy was on the crease coming at him and he came up and met him and uh, just cut off any bit of angle that that attackman had to score. Ben Klein, star of the show so far. Four to two the score, looking at the number of saves today. 10 saves made by the netminder. And when you look at the, some of the shooting percentages that these kids came into this game with, I mean, normally you see it go down because they're missing the net entirely, not because the goalkeepers are as good as he's right. been. Well, you know, they'll keep stats individually for whether it's on goal or not, but but as a saving percentage, he's let two in and saved 10. That is, you know, that is fantastic. So, so congrats to him. Uh, you know, the shot's got to keep coming for St. Margaret's, though. They, they can't be discouraged. There's, it's still a difficult position to play goalie, so they gotta, they got to be confident and keep shooting. In terms of the comparison between the two counties, which has been the stronger in the last few years, L.A. or O.C.? I think Orange County has, been, uh, has, has dominated this championship the last few years. But, uh, you know, I, I was reading some articles this week, and there's some real emergence of some teams in L.A. that have really stepped up. Um, so, you know, look, look for all of Southern California to be just a solid bed of lacrosse. Kids are playing year round. I mean, I mean we're sending, we're sending uh, freshmen all over the country to play Division I, Division III uh, lacrosse. So, so California is uh, making it happen. Another Shot and a save made this time by Austin Birch, the netminder for St. Margaret's in a, a He needed that, down. yeah, he needed a save, so good for him. It'll go over to St. Margaret's. Now you're a San Diego guy. Let's expand this thing SoCal wide. Would you like to see San Diego get in on this action and, and get a look at either the champion of this game or one of the two title well, holders? As part of a state championship, which would be fantastic to see, you've got some wonderful schools up in Northern California as well that could compete. So, you know, for all these schools to continue on for a few more weeks to a state championship, I think uh, it would be wonderful to reign one team a state champion. I think every, any of these players would would support that. Foul win against St. Margaret, so Harvard Westlake does maintain possession. Noah Pompman, quiet today, swinging it around the outside to Corlin. Behind the net now, this is Hudgens. Hudgens to Pompin. And will we see him unleash that shot that has been so famed from the Harvard Westlake coaching staff? He's calling for it on the exterior. They don't send it to him. Instead, it's out to Temko who fires in a save made. Yeah, it looks like he just deflected that and, and got it off the pipe. I'll reset, Temko, pumping, pumping, fires high. That is a rip, and that is just high. And that might have been, you could, you could thank the defense for that. He slid quickly, and I think he drove that shot high. Just over two minutes left here in the first half, four to two the score. Harvard Westlake taking the lead after St. Margaret scored the first two goals of the game. Noah Pompin. Back up top for Temko. Two goals already today. Far side, this is Hudgens. Behind the net, Hudgens. Out to Pompin. Pompin will run it up top. We're inside of two minutes now. Two goal lead for Harvard Westlake. This is Corlin now. Pass goes off. Spin move made by Cephas, and this shot goes high, and it's going to stay again with Harvard-Westlake. Yeah, just, just over the top once again. 
these guys get this, these shots on goal, we're gonna see that scoreboard start clicking. Back underway, a minute 20 left. Good ball management here. They wanna get into halftime with the 5-2 lead. They're gonna look, wait and look for that opportunity. These two teams so evenly matched based off the stats. Here's a drive and a very high shot. Yeah, that drifted out of the back of the stick, brought it back a little too deep. So just over a minute now remaining. These two teams, Harvard Westlake averaged 12 goals a game, allowing seven. St. Margaret's 13 goals per game, allowing seven. So uh, the low scoring, maybe a little lower than they're both used to, but they're definitely in range of their normal defensive marks. Here's a drive, a pass behind the net, goes to Hudgens. Some of that can be attributed to Klein and his saves. It's, uh, this game could be very different if he was uh, not as on as he is. Cephas, bounce shot, and this one bounces through. Again, Harvard Westlake will maintain possession. Wind picking up here in Torrance. And the uh, pace of play picking up as well, Harvard Westlake. Looking for a, a quick strike there. They throw it down low to Holdhouse, but he didn't have the angle. Back out to Temko. Temko, they'll swing it around. Finding Kaplan. Kaplan a drive with 20 seconds left. Quick pass and a dump shot is in for the score. Brooks Hudgens sitting on the doorstep and he's got his second goal of the game. That's a great look and a good goal. Smart, confident. Good play by Harvard Westlake. Yeah, it's a difficult uh, shot to save. You can see the goalies focused on the ball on the other side. A no look, good rip to the other side. And uh, once again, great opportunity for Harvard Westlake, and they took advantage of it. Backdoor look in Harvard Westlake now has five in a row, and you predicted it five to two the score. His faceoff will determine who's going to have a chance, and Harnish digs it out quickly, quickly into the attack end, has it nearly stripped away. Ball pops loose. And we'll see who comes up with it out of the fray. It's Harnish, Harnish, quick shot, and it's just wide. And yeah, it's going to go over to Harvard Westlake. Yeah, that was, uh, once again, goalie was close to the end line when and where the ball went out. That'll give Harvard Westlake the ball with uh, just five seconds left. 5-2 the score, and Harvard Westlake will just send it forward and kill the final few seconds, and that's the half. Harvard Westlake has turned this game around. Five unanswered wow. goals. Yeah, we started with 2-0 and, and great possession by St. Margaret's. We thought it was going to be maybe a blowout. At the break of this L.A. OC title game, it is 5-2. The kids from L.A., Harvard Westlake leading it on Time Warner Cable Sports. The capital of Southern California lacrosse today is West High School here in Torrance. The best of L.A., Harvard Westlake, five, and the best of O.C. Looking for a second-half comeback. They've got two. Sam Farber and James Etheridge with you here on Time Warner Cable Sports. Taking a look at the first-half highlights. Early on, it was St. Margaret's dominating play with possession. Yeah, some great opportunities, and, and they're, they're burying it. And uh, But then Klein came alive and says no more. And a quick shot here from Temko. That also helped things out. Jack Temko with two goals. So, but as you mentioned, uh, the ability of the netminder for Harvard Westlake kept them in it and allowed these goal scorers to get on top as we see shot after shot on target finding their way through. Yeah, and you're seeing some nice assisted goals. Here's a here's a good look. That's, that's unassisted, a good rip. In just a minute, you're going to see a good no-look pass right to the crease for that fifth goal for Harvard Westlake. But uh, just some high-level across. And as we take a look at the numbers here, between the two sides, a lot of things similar, but the big number, the saves for the Warriors. Yeah, 10, 10 is unbelievable for Harvard Westlake. And, and we know Klein is having a game of his life and he keeps it up. He's gonna, he's gonna walk out of here a champion. So 5-2 the score as we get set for second half play. Top scorers so far uh, for St. Margaret's, one apiece, Davis and Eddington. And on the flip side here for Harvard Westlake, two for Temko, two from Hudgens. A little surprising we haven't seen Noah Poppin, though, pop one in. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's certainly taken a few rips, but they've all just been a little bit high or just off. Face off to open up the second half, and we are underway once again here in Torrance. Glad to have you along with us on Time Warner Cable Sports. Sam Farber, James Etheridge, and the entire Time Warner Cable Sports crew welcoming you here to the finale of the boys lacrosse season. No state championship. This is this as is far it. as they'll go. And the 
best of LA and OC. They've treated us to a pretty good game, and, and really it's the guy in between the pipes here, Klein, that's been the star of the show, and not this time as we get a goal from St. Margaret's. Yeah, that was a that was a well-developed play. Came around, had his defenseman beat, and uh, so when the defense slid, found an open man on the crease, and that's a tough save for Klein. That's a tough save for anyone. The youngster, Sam Harnish, able to notch it and just gets it from point-blank range, and we saw the coaching staff from St. Margaret's talking throughout that halftime period. They had to draw some things up. Well, there you go. I mean, they needed that, not only just for the scoreboard, but for their own momentum. They got to believe in themselves here. And another face-off. I think that gives them eight face-offs to two for St. Margaret's. And again, we talked about that being a, uh, a considerable issue. Sam Harnish just scored the goal. Ryan Harnish won the face-off. Now ball loose near the uh, goal yes, of the Harvard Westlake side. Relentless shot. pursuit right there by St. Margaret's to get that ground ball. That was, they earned that. Lots of smashing Lots and slashing. Lots of opportunities here if they look up. Here's Chase Williams, spin move, trying to get to that near post. Turned away, good defense there. Good. And St. Margaret's will reset. Good patience by him. Waller with the wraparound, has a look, fires wide. Great opportunity, great opportunity. We had a great view of that from here too. Over the top, good shot, just missed it by about six inches. You Second look, the jump shot. Yeah, just a, you know, you get a lot of power. You get up in the air and torque that body, and you can you can rip that thing. That's why Derek Jeter jumps every time he throws that ball. Here's a shot and another goal oh, for St. Margaret. Hunter Eddington is second of the day. Just a gorgeous rip. Had some space, took advantage of it, and just sent it. And uh, again, hard to blame Klein on that. Off stick side, low to high, just a really difficult shot to see. Boom, actually high to high, just, just a gorgeous goal. And in a minute and 15 seconds or so, and you can see the power he gets off that when he uh, when he torques. That was that was a that was about the hardest shot we've seen today. Two goals for Eddington. 75 seconds for St. Margaret's to go from really being down in the dumps, having seen a 5-0 run, to being right back in the game. It's five to four. Yeah, in one of these playoff games, you know, I, I think it was uh, St. Margaret scored three goals in, in about 68 seconds. So this game can change quickly, and here we go. Another face-off win by Harnish. Takes it down to the far side. This is McGowan bringing it. McGowan's not afraid to shoot with that long stick. He will put some, he'll put some pressure on it. He's going to head out and send in an offensive nitty. Alex Waller behind net. Comes out to the near side, trying to spin. Lost the handle. Ball comes loose. An awkward pass, but St. Margaret's will have time to track it down with Josh Davis. Those offensive players at mid-stripe, they can't come over the yeah. line, so they're just helplessly waiting, hoping the Correct. ball comes. Correct, and it does often, and there's, you know, the attacker meant to lift, lift the defenseman's stick and try to get it down to their side, but it, it can be a battle there as well. Chase Williams fires and scores! Wow, and we're tied. Pretty much a no-look shot there. Klein never saw it coming, and Williams with his first goal has evened it at five. And that is a beautiful goal. I mean, this, this is something you see in college. You see that rip once again. Doesn't look, he knows where the goal is. He's been shooting at it his whole life. Boom, finds that corner. That is an amazing shot right there for high school. How hard look is that. he shooting that ball? That's probably coming out of there about, on that shot, probably only about 70 miles an hour because he's moving away from the goal. But if he was stepping towards it, I'm sure that guy could get 85, 90 miles an hour on that thing. What's the fastest you've seen at clock, say a college level, high caliber college player? I think the record's somewhere around 100 and 110. But that's, uh, you know, in, in controlled situations. But you don't need to shoot 110. When you're, when you're 10 feet away from that guy and you're not looking at him, you got a defenseman between you and him. Uh, as a goalie, that's a tough ball to say. St. Margaret's bench up in arm after that recent call there, and the two officials getting together to decide who will get possession. Game tied at five. We've seen a, a game of runs so far. And the we push, push is going to go against Harvard Westlake. Saw two goals from Harvard Westlake, uh, made that from St. Margaret's to start. Harvard Westlake closes out the half on a 5 0 run, and now St. Margaret's comes right back with three goals in a row, and we're not even two and a half minutes into the third yeah, you, quarter. You'll see that in lacrosse. It kind of ebbs and flows, and you'll see these bursts of offense and, and momentum, and uh, it looks like it's continuing here for St. Margaret's. Chase Moving Williams up. behind the net, nearly tripped up, keeps his footing. Sends it to Waller. Waller Clearing dancing out. behind the net, pass underneath, and the ball is loose, and it's gonna be handled by Harvard Westlake. That's interference there. 
Would you see been. the ref said, yeah, exactly. Uh, since, it, since he retained possession, they didn't call it. But you can't interfere with the goalie while he's in the crease with the ball under possession. Ball is loose. Lots of jostling for position. And finally, Joey Lieberman comes out with it for Harvard-Westlake. So a rarity this half, a chance to shoot on net here. He needs to call, he needs to call timeout or get some help here. St. Margaret swarms to it, pokes it away, quickly taken back by Harvard-Westlake. Lots of pushing and shoving. Very aggressive play, and St. Margaret comes out with it on the run into the attacking zone. They're on the move. The Tartans looking for a tiebreaker here, and just as we build all that momentum, ball turned over near the sideline. St. Margaret's looking for some open space. They find some Oscar Gomez. Oscar Gomez shoots. Oscar Gomez missed it to the side. A nice save made by Klein. Yeah, just, just unsettled situations often result in uh, scoring opportunities for either team. Great move by Noah Pompin. He's been quiet today. Can he put Harvard Westlake back on top? Holdhouse behind the net. Try and form up that offensive formation. Game tied at five. Roughly eight minutes left. That's just in the third quarter. We got another 12 minutes to go. Yeah, plenty of lacrosse. Tempko to Pompin. Behind the net for Holdhouse. And like other sports, you'll see, you know, who's got the depth, who's got the energy, the stamina to play four quarters. And uh, things can change rapidly as we get towards that final buzzer. Pompin. Temko, he's got a couple of goals today. Temko looks for the shot, bounces it in for the score. Yeah, good shot, put it down on the ground and uh, and just finds the back of the net. He's got the hat trick, game's leading goal scorer. He matches the number on his back with his third of the day. Beautiful shot, nothing you could do, just a, just a rip. And it seemed like there was a chance there for Birch to maybe get to it and the, the deflection, sometimes that yeah, ball doesn't well, bounce quite as true as you think it would. Yeah, it can come off that turf and skid a little bit. It, he, it looks like he was tracking it, just he just didn't get that stick on it. So 6-5 now the score. Harvard Westlake able to stop the bleeding after three consecutive goals from St. Margaret's. And boy, we've got a good one so far here in the Southern California Section Championship. Again, another faceoff won by St. Margaret's. They are dominating that uh, that part of the game. Alex Waller throws underneath, wide open, point blank shot, and brick wall Ben Klein turns him away again. Another beautiful point blank save. And they're working that play a lot, coming around the crease, letting the defense slide, finding the man open, uh, but Ben says no. Boy, Klein, I'm, I'm just gonna start calling him brick wall. Yeah, it's, I think that'd be effective. Here's another low to high shot, and that one screams in from Eddington. He's got his third goal of the game, and we're tied at six. Yeah, Eddington, you just can't give him space. You give him space, he will take advantage of it. And you're right, low to high, just a tough ball to save, uh, even for the brick wall. Let's see it again, this rip to the top see, shelf. You see Klein go low. He thought maybe he was going to keep it low, but uh, he just pulled it high and just found nothing but net. Great rip. How hard was that one coming in? Yeah, that thing, that thing's moving. And uh, not much Ben could do about that. Another face-off win for St. Margaret's. And they'll settle it down and bring in some offense. Yeah, this is this is what uh, this is what St. Margaret's does. They figure out if you've got any weakness at all, they're going to figure it out and they're going to take advantage of it. And this is might uh, have to do not only with the athleticism of these players, but also just the, the raw experience of these of these uh, coaching staff. You know, they, they they know this game. They've forgotten more about lacrosse than a lot of coaches in Southern California know. Ryan Harnish was left alone on the doorstep and he just missed it to the left. Stays with St. Margaret's. I think Harness wouldn't mind having that one back. That was a good opportunity for him. Alex Waller behind the net. It's a four to one run here in the second half for the team in white, the Tartans of St. Margaret's. Here again, working around that side, looking for the crease, and five was open. Eddington, three goals today. Around the far side, is. nice pass underneath, shot yeah. and a goal again. Sam Harnish buries it. And St. Margaret's is on top, 7-6. Yeah, Sam Harnish, I have to say, watching this, is he, he's been open a lot today. He's, he's crafty, he probably plays a little bit of box lacrosse. Looks like he's very comfortable in a crowded situation. If you get him the ball, he'll finish. 
Check out the pass here. There you see the slide, and if they don't get over enough, there he leaves them, and you can see uh, that's, that, that's a difficult situation for Harvard Westlake to get those slides all the way across on such an athletic team. Arnish and Eddington saw them hug there. Five of the goals out of the team's seven today, and they lead it 7-6. Midway through this third quarter, another face-off win for Ryan Harnish. Boy, as, as good as those goal scorers have been, Ryan Harnish, I think it's the guys who haven't factored in the scoring. Ryan Harness yep. is the MVP for St. And, Margaret's, and, you can and see Klein is for Harvard Harness, Westlake. Harness is heading out right now to let an, another uh, MIDI come in, but but he is uh, what you would call at a minimum unsung. I mean, he has given all these guys the opportunity to do what they do so well. Faceoffs on the one side, saves on the other. Those are the key stats, and they've led to a close game. Here's Alex Waller behind the net, just hanging on to it. He'll roll around to the near side, pass up top for Davis. Josh Davis had a goal in the first half. Has a look, fires, and a save made by Klein. Kicked it away. Opportunity here. Got to move it. And Wide open, Eddington. Eddington hesitates, shoots, and he scores. That is unbelievable patience for a high school kid. Many opportunities there, but he waited and waited and just picked his spot and took it. Fourth goal of the day, and, and like you said, he kind of deet the sure. netminder, Klein. Yeah, he faked out the defenseman first right here, then comes in. Looks low and uh, just sticks it right up by. Talk Timeout about, called. Talk about all the hard shots. That was a change up there, change yeah, of pace. Yeah, when you're that close, if you can just do a little head fake or a stick fake to the goalie, you don't even have to shoot it hard. And uh, he just stuck it right where it needed to go. So he's got four goals today, and, and we've seen a lot of action here just the first seven minutes of this second half after seven goals in the entire 24 minutes of the first half. We get the same amount here in the second. Yeah, we see some readjustment, I think, certainly by the offense on St. Margaret's. They, uh, I don't know what the coach is, besides instilling confidence, just letting we'll them know that, that the opportunities the are there. Here are some of the instructions here from St. Margaret's huddle. Josh? Cool. And, St. Uh, Margaret's leading 8-6 to six here over Harvard-Westlake. Harvard-Westlake, it's about possession the second half. They just haven't had the chances. They, they scored once, uh, but they just need to get the ball, and that means face-offs, and that means taking opportunities when there's a ground ball. Fans, we invite you to stay tuned to Time Warner Cable's Channel 101, Channel 411 in San Diego for more great high school sports coverage. For our complete Game of the Week schedule, go to SoCal101TV.com, and you can follow us online through Twitter and Facebook using the handle SoCal101TV. 8-6 to six, the score, St. Margaret's of Orange County leading Harvard Westlake, uh, power from LA, really across the board, all sports, uh, but in lacrosse, especially 2013 has been their year, coming back from a tough conclusion to their league season for a great run through the LA playoffs. Yeah, beating Palos Verde, who was here at this game last year to make it to this game for the first time. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have a new champion this year. The last six years, I think, were dominated both by Foothill and Corona Del Mar winning the championship. So, uh, so we're gonna have a new one this year. St. Margaret's ready to get back out there on the field. When you look at some of the schools that these kids are going to, not a lot of powers in California. Who is the school that you see here on the West Coast that maybe can take advantage of some of this budding talent in well, the Golden State? All the all the programs on the West Coast are growing. I mean, uh, Cal Poly had a great year last year. Um, Chapman has a fantastic coach and program over there. They're battling it out on the East Coast this week for for the MCLA uh, championship. So. Um, you know, a lot of the UC systems are starting to take the sport a little more serious. Sonoma, Berkeley's got a great program. So, uh, you know, if kids don't want to go too far from home, there's some fantastic lacrosse opportunities right here on the West Coast. And the sport just dominated at the collegiate level by those East Coast schools, the Maryland's, the Dukes, the Princeton's. Well, you've got Princeton, Johns Hopkins, and Virginia who are not making it to the playoffs this year. So that that is a telling sign that, that lacrosse is changing. Right. Uh, that just That's just unheard of, 10, 15 years ago it is it is a new game and likewise 10 15 years ago in, in baseball it'd be unthinkable to think of a small east coast school like stony brook making the college world series and we're seeing that happen so maybe you can flip that script in lacrosse and see a, a cal poly or a cal berkeley make it to that level one day sure i mean there, there are teams moving michigan moved up to division one um and uh you know you're seeing you're seeing schools change divisions just based on their 
Another great save by Ben. The wow. brick wall is back. He couldn't get a stick there, but he got his body there. He knew exactly where that was, and he took care of it. 8-6 the score, and we're going to have this ball and turn back yeah, over. Another missed opportunity by Harvard-Westlake. They, if they get that ball, they have got to protect it. And uh, again, they're giving it back to St. Margaret's. Just a, a lack of possession here in the second half. Four and a half minutes remain in this third quarter. It's 8-6 to six St. Margaret's. They have outscored the opposition 6-1 to one in this third quarter. Yeah, that is significant. Un unfortunate there. So let's see what uh, if Harvard Westlake can take advantage of this opportunity. That time, you've been watching the ball stay with the team that shoots it so often, but that time it was passed. So that, you don't exactly. get the, the hold of possession. Yeah. Since it wasn't a shot, it's the last team to touch it before it goes out of bounds, and that was St. Margaret's. Let's see if they can clear this. Try and they got about, they've got 30 seconds to get it into the offensive box on the other side. If they don't, it's called failure to advance and, and again it would change hands but they've got it in that's why you see them step in and step out so now they can set up their offense let's see if they can take one of those back Roman Holdhouse throws behind the net work it outside to Temko who's got three goals today for Harvard Westlake Pompin now who has no goals and that's a shock he wants one though you can tell he has, he has certainly made an effort. He's just got to get it on goal. Harvard Westlake needs one from him. Down under three and a half minutes now here in the third quarter. A drive by O'Shea. O'Shea, this one ricochets wide and it'll stay with Harvard Westlake. Looks like goalie maybe got a, got a stick on it. Now we have a whistle and a restart. This is Kaplan swinging it around to Pompin. Talked about him before the game, just has been very quiet. And that might have something to do with the defense. You can see they got uh, they got their long stick on it. McGowan, who has really done a great job of kind of shutting him down today. And they are keeping him on him. They're not, uh, you'll see, I saw earlier in the first half where they, they, they just won't leave him. And uh, it's kind of it shows respect to Pompin. Old house just hanging on to it behind the net, dancing around, not finding anyone to give it to or any Alleys to try and drive towards the front of the net. Finally passes it off, and it goes to Brooks Hudgens, who's got a pair of goals today. Pass over the top. Kaplan gets it. Kaplan, nice dance move. Little spin spin now. Dodge. And again behind the net to Holdhouse. Just nowhere to go. This St. Margaret's defense leaving no chinks in the armor. Part of this offense might be the idea that if Here's a shot, a dump, and outside this is on the, the outside of the goal. Good attempt there by Hudgens, but just didn't have enough daylight to squeeze one in there. Much of it might just be the idea that if, if St. Margaret's doesn't have the ball, they can't score, you know, to, to try to just get some time of possession, give your defense a rest, but here it comes back to St. Margaret's. Josh Davis has it for the Tartans. St. Margaret's with an 8-6 lead. Oscar Gomez. Back to Davis. Davis he is drives fast. the net. And he'll hang on, throw it behind. It goes to Williams. Swing around the horn to Eddington. Eddington fires high, and this one is going to stay. Again, that ball started to sneak out of the stick when he when he brought it back to shoot. And that's just uh, a function of, of keeping that stick high and in the box. 90 seconds remain in this third quarter. Alex Waller. Passes it off, goes to Eddington. Couldn't quite handle it cleanly, but picks it right back up. Harvard Westlake defense looks a little tired out there, not exactly pursuing those loose balls as quickly as earlier. Here's a drive by Davis. Davis good. lost the handle, and here's the scoop and takeaway by Harvard Westlake. It's popping. Yeah, that was a good trail check. Again, too often you see that happen. Guys pass somebody. He rips it, and this one There's is in. Pompin. Noah Poppin, welcome back. He's got his first goal of the day and makes it a one-score contest. A nice rip over the top, off stick side, right at the hip. Very difficult shot to save. Good goal by Pompel. The lacrosse equivalent of coast to coast. It's 8-7 now. And Noah Pompel, we heard about it all day go. long, and finally gets in the score sheet. Up high, just, a, just, just disguised it well. Hit it behind his head, 
oh, off the, actually off the elbow, the goalie, but, but a great spot. If it's off stick side, very difficult to get to. So we're under a minute left, and we've got a push called here on Harvard Westlake. Unfortunate, here they're gonna be, they're gonna be a man down here, they gotta get a man out there. So good fast break opportunity for St. Margaret's. Shot Again, is just, high. Just over the top. Well, you gotta fire high because Ben Klein's not yeah. giving you many windows. No, he's not. I really couldn't even tell you his weakness. He is, he's stopped everything today. He's just a junior, so he'll be back again. I think we found his nickname, Brickwall Ben Klein. That is fitting today. He has, he has kept his team in this. 8-7 the score. St. Margaret's really has dominated this third quarter of play. On the perimeter, this is Davis. Back for Shanks, the freshman. Watch, uh, watch number five on the crease get open. 12 seconds. Shanks over the top. Eddington couldn't handle the pass, or that might have been a goal. Ball is loose. It's collected by Harnish. Five seconds. Pass down low. This one's loose. And will they have time to get off another shot? No. Horn sounds. And the third quarter expires, but St. Margaret's has turned it around. It is 8-7. And thanks really to Harvard Westlake netminder Ben Klein. That's the big reason they're still in this game. Yeah, he let a few in at the beginning of the quarter, but he had some huge saves, uh, again, third quarter to keep him in it. A 6-2 to one, two run for St. Margaret's here in the third quarter. Goals came early, and they are now on top. Final quarter coming up, the Southern California Championships in lacrosse on Time Warner Cable Sports. What a gorgeous view there of Torrance. Beach looking quite nice here on a Saturday afternoon, but no place we'd rather be than West High School, the host of the U.S. Lacrosse Southern Section Championships, best of L.A. versus the best of O.C., and there is probably the best player in this game, Ben Klein, the netminder for Harvard-Westlake. Yeah, once again, a, a great fill-in this year. He was not goalie last year, uh, stepped up and has just, you know, it's when I asked the coach about, you know, what are your strengths this year, he went right to Ben, and we can see why. 15 saves today and make it 16 as he sticks another one out of the air. Yeah, Ben is very confident and athletic and boy, he, he's, he is on that ball. He sees it, he, he knows where you're shooting before you even shoot it. Brick wall, Ben Klein. It's gonna stick, we're gonna see to it. Here's a nice steal takeaway by St. Margaret's. Reading the pass is Brandon Sushan and the future Grand Canyon player into the attacking zone. He bounces one in and the long stick able to score. And there you go, that, that, that opportunity for them to take care of the ball when they've got it. Harvard Westlake can't do it. They give it away and they pay for it. Just a great individual effort. Sushan able to go coast to coast no one ever stopped him. No one forced no, him to give it up. you can see right here, and it was basically handed to him uh, at just, just past midfield. Here There's you the see pass, the takeaway. and he was right there. I mean, he was right there. And that's unfortunate for Harvard Westlake, and even Ben can't stop the torque of that huge stick. So 9-7, now the score. And another face-off win for Ryan Harnish. Flips it over to his teammate. That's Nick Shanks who will bring it up. So a two-goal lead here for St. Margaret's. And I don't think uh, Harvard Westlake has won a face off the second half. Another shot, wide another open, save. Wide open, and Ben Klein makes a save. We got interference called against St. Margaret's. Ball was picked up by Harnish, but the whistle had clearly already blown. How about Ben Klein? How, that, how somebody could be that open at this level is, is beyond me. With that said, Ben steps up again. It's 9-7 now, and Harvard-Westlake, boy, their defense has been fun to watch, but they've got to start doing something offensively. They've only had two goals in this second half. That's, uh, again, This part of the reason again. why, another turnover. Yeah. Waller brings it up. Waller into the attack. Waller bounces it home. I mean, Ben can only do so much. He, he, he's got to get some support from his players. Uh, he gets the ball back on a one-on-one -on -one save, and immediately they give it back again. The last two goals have resulted from 
just poor stick work by Harvard Westlake. That makes six different scoring options for St. Margaret's today. Alex Waller, the latest to join in, and you saw Ben Klein afterwards screaming at his teammates, screaming at his bench. He needs, he desires, he has to get some help. Yeah, absolutely. And and we said it earlier, you know, it's all about possession. And when Harvard Westlake gets the ball, they just can't seem to hang on to it. So, uh, and again, this might have to do with with depth or or physical prowess. Now he got a you hold, know? and it's again against Harvard Westlake. And if Harvard Westlake is tired, they're just making they're just making silly mistakes. Ryan Harnish pass goes to Shanks. Shanks into the box, down low, shot turned away by Klein again. Seventeen I, saves. And they're, they're and now we got a flag out. Looks like a push. Ah, cross check called against St. Margaret. So that will give C. Harvard limping. Westlake an opportunity here. Sorry, C limping out the field. Joey Lieberman, the junior midi. Yeah, that could be a cramp, or maybe he hurt himself. Let's see. There it is right here. Take a second look, and he might have gotten stepped on. Yeah, it looks like he fell over a player as well as his stick. Got the call. A one minute personal four cross track. Number so a one minute Nick man Sanders. advantage coming up here for Harvard Westlake. And they need it. Power play down three. See if they can score one here. And the shot Again. blocked on Again, the perimeter from Temco. A man up opportunity to shoot from the top of the box is not advised. But uh McGowan down low, easy finish, no, brick wall, Ben Klein again. Unbelievable, unbelievable, man down, and they, they get the ball back, bring it all the way down, and Ben shuts him down. Just locks down that defense so beautifully. I don't know if he can play any better. He well, might be MVP of the game, regardless of win, lose, or draw. I have to agree with you up to this point. A steal made by Harvard Westlake, Philip Thompson. Able to start the counterattack. Still a few seconds left on this man advantage. Here goes Pompin. Pompin bounces it, and a nice save made on the other end by Austin Birch. Again, a man up advantage, have opportunity. They need to learn to move that ball and find the opportunity. They might feel a little rushed with the score, but they've got uh, they've got almost 10 minutes left in this game. Looking for an easy goal. It's not going to happen today. It certainly hasn't happened for St. Margaret's, but they've still found the back of the net 10 times. Well, they're doing a nice job of moving the ball around and finding the open man. They're, they're, uh, the shots they're taking are, are high quality. And I think we're both in agreement. A lesser goalie, this is a laugh oh, yeah. at this point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Here's a wide open look, a bouncer Again. and a goal! Again, wide open with time and space and takes full advantage of it with a beautiful bounce shot that bounces in front of Ben six or eight feet, comes right up and hits right under the pipe. Unstoppable, just a beautiful shot. Hunter Eddington, his fifth goal of the day. We'll see it again, and just left all alone. I mean, you just can't let these guys with this sort of ability wind up. And you can see the ball, it's stuck in the top of the goal up there. I mean, just, just unbelievable. So with nine minutes of change left here in this contest, St. Margaret's pulling away. Since halftime, there's another it has opportunity. Been a nine to two run. Bounces over the top, but another just quality look and rip. So 11 7 the score. St. Margaret's, they might start to play a little bit more possession based offense here with the lead. Maybe not. They yeah. fire over the top. Well, Chase you heard, Williams missing high. And, and you heard uh, Glenn Miles when we asked him, you know, what's the key today? He said lots of shots. So. I think these guys are gonna, they're gonna go after it. They're playing to win now. Alex Waller, pass underneath, great look there to a cutting Gomez, but he couldn't field the pass cleanly and Harvard Westlake comes away with it. Look at the relentless pursuit by the freshman. Ball loose again, and picked up by up St. Margaret's. Here's a shot and he'll bury it again. Sam Harnish, the freshman, has three and the route is on now. St. Margaret's up by five. And if we, if we get an opportunity to see that play again, you'll see he earned it. He was back there, he fought for it, he got the loose ball. Love little fake for Ben, nothing he could do. But again, Ben's gotta be upset. It's one of his own men who lost the ball. Had good patience, great fake, and it's all his. So 12-7 now the score. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left. Harnish just a freshman, this St. Margaret's team. A 
lot of the firepower is going to be back next year. Hunter Eddington has five goals. And Coach Miles, first year, he's already looking like he might have a Southern California title to his name. And more in store for 2014. Okay, let's see. Harvard Westlake won that faceoff mostly because it bounced off the leg of the ref, if, if we see that in replay. And again, they just cannot hold on to the ball. It's, it, it's, it's plaguing them. Ball loose, picked up by Harvard Westlake, and now a whistle. And it's gonna be a timeout taken by That's Harvard Westlake. Smart call for the coach here, to settle him down. Yeah, on that faceoff, it was another beautiful faceoff by Harness. He was pu pulling it down to the offensive side of the field, and it bounced right off the shin of the ref and went right back. There you go. Let's see if we can take a look at this. Again, uh, you know, Harness is just on fire. Pulls it out. It's headed that way. Comes off the shin and bounces the other way. If we see that from midfield, you'll uh, you'll see a clean look at it. But either way, let's see what Westlake can do with the uh, with possession now. If they're patient. Move it around and see if they can do something to the scoreboard here. Just over eight minutes left here in the Southern California Championship. U.S. Lacrosse presenting L.A. and O.C. getting together and a, a pretty good crowd on hand to see it. Harvard Westlake and St. Margaret's. Glad to have you along with us as well here on Time Warner Cable Sports. The face-off advantage for St. Margaret's has really given them all those added opportunities to shoot on goal. 18 face-off wins for Ryan Harnish against five for the opposition. And then the saves made on that number, the one that looms large for Harvard Westlake, is almost 20 saves now wow. from Ben Klein. Yeah, that's, that's career right there. Uh, tragically, it's, it's at this point, it's, it's he's losing, but but as a goalie, he's got to be happy. Ground balls, too, are, it looks like they're being dominated as well by St. Margaret's. And we don't have the numbers on it. It's harder to pick up, but the, the unforced errors, I mean, that is just simply astounding. Uh, 15 tur turnovers for Harvard Westlake right. against 12 for St. Margaret's, but just the unforced oh, sure. errors, just yeah. dropping the ball yeah. out of your of your netting for no apparent reason. That's happened yeah. a couple times. And I don't know if they're tired or if they're nervous, but but yeah, their stick work has, has dropped off a bit the second half. They look, they look so good first half. Let's see what they can do here. There was a five goal spurt for Harvard Westlake for about the last, what, 15 minutes of the yeah. first half. And in this second half, it has gone all the other way for St. Margaret's. They're and, on a 10-2 run. And certainly St. Margaret's offense has done their job, but there you go. Another another ball just thrown out of bounds. Just nowhere near a player. Uh, we maybe should give some of this credit to the defense of St. Margaret's. Uh, they may have readjusted at halftime and just uh, created created the opportunity to uh, to let this team give it back to them. St. Margaret's take a little bit of time. You only have so many seconds to get into the offensive end. But they'll okay. possibly try and bleed some clock. Here's Brenton Sushan. Throw down low. Now you might see him slow it down a little bit with just over seven minutes left to play. Now they're still going right to the cage. Good for them. They came to win. Eddington out to Davis. Josh Davis, the junior, just hanging out near the 35-yard line. Harvard Westlake's going to have to step it up here and play a little bit tighter D and try to uh, try to deny them the ball and just do what they can. We're under seven minutes to play. Eddington, it's five goals today, passes it off to Davis, and another save made. And another turnover, and this time Klein's oh. got his hands on his head because he knows this is his yeah, mistake. That's Klein joining in in this in this inability to, to control that ball. So, again, you know, they know the clock's not working for them. They've got to get the job done quickly. They just have to be a little more patient, play their game. Six minutes and 37 seconds left. St. Margaret's with the five-goal advantage. Dancing behind the net, it's Chase Williams. Pass it off up top, Eddington, five goals today. Back down low, it goes to Harnish, Sam Harnish this time. Chase Williams now with control, spinning it in his stick, runs near side, wrap around, fires high, and this one's still gonna stay with St. Margaret's as they're closest to it, and is that a chance that we might see 
Harvard Westlake start taking is leaving someone closer to the back line to try and take back the ball in those possessions? Well, what you'll see actually in the last few minutes, you'll even see the goalie come out and they'll double the ball. Uh, but uh, they're not to that point, but you're, you're starting to see him play denial defense where Hunter uh, Eddington cross face of the goal and he hits it off the bar and in. And I don't know that Klein even saw that. I mean, it just came from the backside. Watch him hide the stick so well behind his body. And he rips it hard and perfectly placed. Boom. And just right in the corner. That's a great camera angle there. You see it. That stick is hidden well behind his head. Klein can't even see the ball until it's too late. Just a great play. Hunter Eddington with six goals now. That's the difference. It's 13 to seven with six minutes left. Again, Hunter's a junior. This team, I think they'll be back on this field in about a year. And this wasn't the top seed from Orange County. They had to upset some very strong perennial power programs. Yes, they did. And, and they did it, like I said, their road to the playoffs was, was I, I don't say easy, they worked hard, but but they beat some really good teams with, with significant, uh, once again, a 65 to 20 uh, outscoring ratio by uh, St. Margaret's getting to this game. And while the defense has been pretty good, I gotta believe Ryan Harnish was the biggest part of that winning face-off after face-off and just hanging on to, pos to possession. Yeah, that's again, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the game that, that you, you just can't do much without the ball. And if he'll get it to you every time, you, you're, you just you, you still got to finish, and they're doing that. You got to hand it to that. And the defense has done a great job the second half of shutting down Harvard. So, all around a great effort. Here's Justice Cephas with a strike and a goal, his yeah. second of the day. He had a free walk to the cage there. If we see on the replay, uh, nobody really stepped to pick him up. A rare um, breakdown defensively. Yeah, a little bit. Just a lot of people sitting flat footed. You see, watch and see seven finally gets in there, but a good individual effort by him. The slide came, it just came to the wrong side and too late. So 13 to eight now the score. We'll see Ryan Harnish go back to work in that center circle. And a rarity, a loose ball that Harvard Westlake had a 50-50 shot at, but Ryan Harnish just comes in and plucks it up. Yeah, it's good hustle, good hustle. And that's why I think it was after the third, after the third quarter leading, uh, I think they were leading ground balls 36 to 24. Here's Harnish and he dunks it home. Make that number 22, Chase Williams from point blank range. And it's another six goal lead after Williams second of the day and nothing Klein could have done about that. Yeah, another beautiful just goal initiated from X. Uh, just the classic cut down the middle, you know, catch and throw. You don't even cradle, just a great play. What you're looking for in lacrosse right there. Guys, uh, defenseman's right on his shoulder, but he's still able to make the catch and uh, make the goal. And Klein possibly getting a bit frustrated there in net. He has had to work awful hard today just to keep his team in it. And I don't think we can stress on it enough. that This is a 20-goal game for St. Margaret's with an average or human keeper in there. This is true, yeah. He's, uh, he's certainly done his job. So 14-8 the score. And it's starting to seem as if St. Margaret's is on its way to a title, but they've got to play strong lacrosse and at the very least continue to possess the ball. Near steal there by number 38, Clay Davis, the defenseman, almost got to it. Ryan Harnish continues to dominate the faceoffs, and this this player's a sophomore. He's got he's got two more years of just giving St. Margaret's the opportunity to win. Alex Waller dipped a toe into the crease prematurely, and so the ball will go back to Harvard Westlake. Let's see if they can clear it here. Ball got popped up in Again. the air, they couldn't find Again. it, and here comes St. Margaret. Shot and a save made by Klein. Ben Klein keeps his composure in there. 21 Knows saves. Knows what he's gotta do. 21 saves. That's not shots off goal that missed. That's 21 saves. Yeah, that, that's, that is career for Ben. And that's, you know, after you're, when you're down and the clock's running low and you've, you've let one or two go, to have that composure to fire up and, and, and make a great save like that just shows the depth of his, his ability. He, he's gonna want this video because that's a recruit highlight that is. there. Harvard Westlake running out of time. They're under four minutes now. Temko has three goals today. And Passes another. it up the sideline, could be a turnover, but they'll track it down with Brooks Hudgens, who has a pair of goals. 
Harvard Westlake held in the second half to just again, again, three goals. just inability to hold onto the ball, showing no real urgency, moving it towards the cage. See and more St. Margaret's players swarming to this than Harvard Westlake. Ball still loose, and rolling it around like it's field hockey. And now That's a trip, trip up near the far sideline. Didn't see a whistle, and yeah, they're going to give it to Harvard Westlake. Last touch by St. Margaret's. Let's see if they show a little bit of urgency here with just over three minutes left. We'll see what happens. Ross O'Shea. Check that, that's Justin Cephas with two goals. Now O'Shea, he fires from distance, and this one a save made by Birch. Under three to play. Oh, good save. McGowan. Oh, McGowan is taking two shots today. Finds Williams. Give to the cutting Josh Davis. He scored the first goal of the day. Now in about 40 seconds, uh, St. Margaret's is going to be is going to have to keep it inside that offensive box. You can see down there the line running behind or just below the, the football field markers. And uh, at, with a lead, with two minutes, if they take it outside the box, they will lose possession. Chase uh, Williams. Being crowded by the defender, but the sure stick handling, they're just not giving it up. Yeah, and this is, you know, coaches practice this. When you're up, you want to be able to just maintain and stall. Flag out, pass in the box, unable to control it. Now we'll have the penalty, and this is going to go against Clay Davis. I'm interested to see. From here, it didn't look probably a slash. And they're going to actually put it on number four. So Andrew Park hit with the slash. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, so. Now you're 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 two minutes away from winning this Southern Section Championship, and you're a man up. So you'll see them probably just run the ball out to do their very best here. Um, it's not really in their interest to. To shoot, but I, I, I'd be surprised if if Harvard doesn't be a little more aggressive on defense, even though they're a man down. Well, right now they're sitting back. And yeah, I St. Margaret's has no problem yeah, with they're, that. They're basically saying, you know, it's yours, it's yours, take it. So, desperate times call for desperate measures. They really should be. Sam Harnish with it. Three goals today for the freshman. His older brother Ryan Harnish, just a sophomore. Winning all those face-offs. And you see the opportunity there. They didn't take it. Um, once again, I think they're just clock management here. They're just going to do their best to keep the ball in the box. Alex Waller. Just walking it around. We're down to almost a minute left. Pass, a nice oh. rip, and another goal from Sam Harnish. God, and that freshman. one just snuck its way through. I tell you, as a freshman, he's got, he's got some skills and a beautiful low to high shot. It was, a, it was a low pass, caught it low, stepped into it, and just ripped it. Let's see it again. The pass was low, he caught it low, and just let it go. Off stick side, just, just textbook. So I'm, Sam Harnish makes it 15 to eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the, uh, the guess that Sam and his brother have a goal in their backyard, because that is, that's, that's a guy who's shot a lot of balls. Well, Sam's got a goal, and Ryan's got a face-off circle. Yeah. Yeah, they, he's got somebody to face off against. Again. Here's a face off win. This time it's this Willie Schmall, a senior, coming in and winning it initially, but Harvard Westlake will scoop it up on the turnover. One minute left. And we'll see. It seems like the final outcome has been decided, but what will the final score be? That was a hold called against St. Margaret's. It'll give Harvard Westlake an opportunity here at the end of the game to see if they can get one more or two. Brooks Hudgens on the outside. They give it over to Justin Cephas. Cephas Good dumps luck. down low and a clear shot at the goal, but Gomez couldn't bury it. I think Gomez would want that back. That was a great opportunity for him and uh, unlucky and off the, uh, off the leg of the keeper. What a second half here for St. Margaret's. 13 to three, the second half score differential. Yeah, it was all theirs. The halftime, the halftime talk was significant. 
The bouncer goes over the top. Still will stay with Harvard Westlake. Hudgens recovering. Just enough time for one more scoring run. 15 seconds left. This one thrown high. 12 seconds left. A little frustration certainly sensed by these boys. They had it, had the lead at half, and uh, 24 short minutes later, they are looking at a second place. They played hard. They did get that lead, but in the end, just too much St. Margaret's. As the countdown Again. goes on, a Again. turnover fitting enough as the Tartans are champions of Southern California. 15-8, the final St. Margaret's wins the LAOC Lacrosse Championship. And there they go, the Tartans will celebrate with the student body. A seven goal victory. They turn it around in the second half, outscoring their opponent 13 to three. Yeah, just a great performance second half. They kept their composure, they continued to play their game, they found their opportunities and took advantage of them. With no help from Ben, by the way. Uh, just again, I, I, he's certainly been uh, a highlight of, of Harvard Westlake today. Uh, unfortunate for him, it was a loss. We're gonna come back with trophies and some more talk about this outstanding performance from St. Margaret's overcoming an outstanding brick wall goalkeeper and Ben Klein. The Tartans are your Southern California champions in boys lacrosse here on Time Warner Cable Sports. The Tartans are the toast of LA and OC. St. Margaret's, your Southern section lacrosse champions, defeating the Harvard Westlake side by a final of 15 to eight. Let's take a look at the final numbers. The final score didn't really show how close this game was. Some numbers to note, uh, the shots on goal overwhelmingly in favor of the Tartans, but the saves from brick wall Ben Klein, he kept his team in the game yeah, for most sure of it. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, it could have been a tremendous blowout without his great performance. Face-offs, again, the possession for uh, St. Margaret's. We talked about at the beginning, that is just so important in, in, in the way the game has evolved. You've got to have that ball, and if you got a face-off guy uh, who's going to do that for you, then, then good for you. And Ryan Harnish accomplished that for St. Margaret's. Certainly that team's MVP helping give them possession after possession, chance after chance, and eventually they were able to break through the brick wall and get the win, 15-8 to eight the final, and the Tartans get to celebrate a section final, it stays in OC. Yeah, and I tell you what, looking at their roster and who was who, who got the work done, these are underclassmen and we're gonna see them again. Uh, but, and again, Harvard Westlake, just a fantastic season for them. They really played hard out there, both sides did. It was a lot of fun, very competitive, but in the end, the title goes to the St. Margaret's Tartans. That's gonna do it for us here. For James Etheridge, I'm Sam Farber saying thanks for watching here on Time Warner Cable Sports.